Guys, the scam we're investigating today took in over $20 million and their CEO the whole time was an actor. Guys, uh, everyone knows if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And yet every year, people keep falling for it. Why? Well, we know desperation plays a large role. COVID does as well. People are out of work, looking for a new way to make their uh, make money. And one popular new method is something called a hype. Have you guys heard of this? It's called the high yield investment program. Not spelled like hype, like spelled like hype like this. Uh, this is always a Ponzi scheme. Do not believe it. If somebody's claiming these crazy returns, it's probably a scam. The specific scam we're talking about today and investigating is Barack's, but these are a dime a dozen. In fact, I interviewed someone who was addicted to these things. And let me tell you, people who fall for them are not who you'd expect, okay? It's not, it's a lot of these people say, I never could have imagined myself getting involved in this. I don't know what I was thinking. We're talking to Bernard and Perry today, and uh, we'll be hearing from them. A lot of the people who invest in this stuff, they never saw themselves investing with these things, but they're clever techniques used to trick you into investing with these idiots. So first of all, what is the Burex scam? Well, Burex was a website that popped up that wanted to imitate financial institutions um, offering, let's just say, very uh, speculative returns, 1.4% a day. <laughs> And you could even get more than that if you invested more money. Now, if you're a longtime CoffeeZilla fan, you know that 1.4% a day doesn't exist. But if you're not, if you're an average Joe who maybe doesn't spend all your days laughing at scams, maybe you don't. So let's take a deeper dive and figure out who Burex claimed to be before it all came falling apart. But before it collapsed, let's take a look at some of their promotional materials, shall we? And how dynamically technologies are developing in the modern world. It would not be wise not to apply them in the field of automation of financial analysis processes. In March 2018, our team for the first time allowed themselves to put the management of multiple accounts in the hands of a trading bot developed by our specialists. Inspirational music, check. Sketchy Russian accent, check. What do we got? Buzzwords, oops, that's also a check. This looks credible, right? It's well shot, it's well documented. This guy looks like a CEO, doesn't he? He looks like someone who would run a big organization. But the problem is the claims are just too high. 1.4% a day could not exist. If it did, you'd quickly become the richest man in the world. There's no such thing as a guaranteed return. This was actually the hallmark of one of the greatest scammers ever, Bernie Madoff. And the hallmark of all Ponzi schemes is these steady, guaranteed returns that are super attractive. They don't really exist. And deep down, you know it doesn't really exist. Even the people that I talked to, the people who got scammed, they even told me, you know, I, I, I kind of maybe felt that something was maybe off. But, uh, you know, it just it just seemed like, you know, a good chance for me to make some money. If you have even the twinge of maybe this is, I don't know, maybe this isn't really real, get the hell out. And after a few days of successful operation of this bot, we were convinced that we need to completely change the concept of our work. And after three months of break-even trading operations, we realized that we had made a hedge break for in the field of exchange. This is another thing they say. Besides the buzzwords, they always talk about their journey, how they found a great bot after years of work, it was failing, then all of a sudden, it just worked. It just works like magic, guys, and it's never failed since. Honestly, they're not looking for your average Joe's money. They're looking for big boys. They want to talk to people with billions of dollars or millions of dollars, not your $5,000. So the first big red flag of uh, any kind of investing portal is if they're gonna give you high returns and you don't need much starter cash. If they're guaranteeing returns and they're saying, hey, just invest $10, $20, $50, $100. Look, real investors, no offense, don't want tiny fish's money. They don't care about you. They want like the big dogs. And it makes sense, right? Why would you want to deal with 20,000 clients with $5,000 instead of one client with like $20 million? It doesn't make, it, yeah, it's, it's just the numbers don't work out. Why would you deal with that headache? Now, before we move on and talk about how the CEO is a paid actor, let's first hear from our victims from this scam. This is Bernard and Perry. I initially made two deposits. The first one was one Ethereum. I believe one Ethereum at that time was 
if I'm not mistaken, around the 1500 range. In total, at that time that I made those two deposits, it totaled out to two two point three Ethereum. But that's so, not uh, that's like four thousand dollars. That's that's a lot of exactly. money. Exactly, exactly. The part of understanding why that happened to me, it's a it's worth a lot more because I'm not gonna make that same mistake going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bernard. He also lost money with the Burex scheme. How much did you lose, Bernard? I lost around 10 Ethereum at that time. Jeez. Yeah. That's a lot. That's that's a serious yeah. amount of money. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad because some of my buddies, like, I put in about 13 people in this thing. So it was, uh, it was a pretty sad day, man, when I had to tell each individual their money is gone because everybody trusted my word. You know, your word is your bond. And then uh, when I had to tell them, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're telling me our money's gone. And, uh, and it was 70 Ethereum guy. across all the people, 70 Ethereum? Yeah, across my across my people, it was around 73 Ethereum. How much, how much is that? 73 Ethereum, I want to say $140,000, $150,000. One Ethereum now is $2,000. When we come across these type of platforms, Unless they're like legitimate, I would just go the other way. I'm, I, I know for a fact I'm not getting myself into that same situation again. But yeah, if as you I see mentioned, one percent a day, walk the other way. Okay. <laughs> now these losses are terrible, but I think it's worth telling you guys that during those conversations, I was really trying to hammer home the idea that these returns should have never been considered credible. There's this idea that like, maybe this wasn't the right investment vehicle. In other words, like, oh, maybe this one doesn't work, but there is a legitimate hype out there. And the answer to that like thought is no, 1% a day doesn't exist. If it does, it carries high risk in all likelihood. If you can just get it in your head that 1% a day or anything close to that just doesn't exist, you are going to do very well. You're not going to fall for these insane get rich quick schemes. So if you're one of these people that thinks, oh, maybe I just need to find the right one, the right scheme that does work, you're going to get burned because these guys are good at making themselves look legit. Like they'll oftentimes put um, their address somewhere it's not actually. Like they'll pretend to be from somewhere they're not. So obviously the actor we saw is Russian, right? But they put their address in Australia. Why? Because people trust Australia more than they do Russia. Now this is the street view of Australia where they say they're they're located in and of course we can't find their building because it doesn't exist. They also say they're registered in Australia, which of course they're absolutely not and that documentation turns out to be completely fake. But the real cutting edge innovation is what I've been hinting to this whole time. The people supposedly running the show are puppet actors. So take a look at this man and this work was uncovered by Behind MLM. Look at this guy, look familiar? Or perhaps this guy, this is an actor profile. This is the same man that we see here posing as an investment professional for a Ponzi scheme. Additionally, the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, was a girl named Susan Pope. And 78% of the committed trading transactions. She also went on many live streams, many podcasts to talk about, to shill this thing. And she answered questions like a good old pro would. BS artists saying all the things they were doing and you know, just get generally giving the impression this is a professional organization. And I, as a marketing director who was directly involved in its development, can only confirm his words. So she gave many interviews. Only it turns out her acting reel wasn't covered. She says, I am a student at the higher school of performing arts, the same exact person. This is not a marketing person. This is an actor and people fell for it. Now, the sad thing is, is that once these people were outed as actors, the Ponzi scheme, unfortunately, of course, collapses like it was destined to anyways. And uh, Bernard and Perry lost their money and are very unlikely, unfortunately, to get it back because Unlike Jay Mazzini, the people who set up this scam didn't put their name on it. Instead, they just attached a bunch of hired actors to it. But this is to let you know the lengths these people will go to. There's so much money to be made by scamming people 
I mean, it's the most despicable thing you can do to another human being, but there's a lot of money in it. And so unscrupulous individuals will go to any length to get this done. In total, we saw wallets approach $20 million total from this scam that ran for less than a year. Less than a year, and it had no reputation. No one had ever heard of this before it ran. So in one year, no reputation, two paid actors, $20 million. If that doesn't give you an idea at the length someone would be willing to go to get this kind of money, I don't know what could. But let me tell you guys, they will go to this length and farther to convince you that they're legitimate and deposit money with them. And once you do, it's as good as gone. Once you transfer cryptocurrency to somebody else's wallet, you've effectively said goodbye, right? They, they're saying they're keeping your money. If it's not regulated, if you don't have that money insured, if it's not within your local jurisdiction, chances of you getting that money back are basically nothing, um, which is horrible to say. And um, overall, you know, the victims of this, they just want to see that no one falls for this again. We knew the consequences. We saw the red lights, but we still went in. It's, it's, it's our, our own mistake, but it's also a opportunity to prevent other people from doing that same mistake as well. I don't care if Mark Cuban himself descends from the Dallas Mavericks and tells you to put your money with him. You do not do it. Coffeezilla says no. If <laughs> If they're making insane promises, chances are they're insane. Don't put your money with them. That's basically it. Hope you learned some lessons today. Thanks for watching. Um, and uh, that's basically it. I'll see you guys next time. I know what you mean. This ain't what it seems. Nothing but a trick. Trying to sell me on a dream. But that was where you lost me. Wake up and smell the coffee.